Good evening, dear church. It's such a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord, to learn from the scriptures as we heard from Alex just a few minutes ago about the importance of using the word, the, spirit, the word of the spirit. And today we're going to have a chance to practice what we just heard, and we're going to open up our Bibles and learn from this this sword that can pierce to the depths of our souls and to convict of us of things that we need to change in our lives. And I would like to invite us to open to Philippians chapter 2. We're continuing just going through this chapter, this book. It's a very, very interesting book. As we go, we'll see how Apostle Paul keeps developing this very short letter, but it has so much important things that we can learn about a Christian walk to get together. So last time, if you remember, we talked about this important message that Apostle Paul said to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And he said that was a very important thing for us to do. And then the next very verse he says is how we can live it out practically. So today, the topic I would like to share about is light. Light is a very important substance. We cannot live without light. Nothing can survive. Everything revolves around light. Before Before the Industrial Revolution, when there was no light switches, you know, once it got dark, basically all activities ceased. There was just a candle or a light, a light, single light source in the house, and then when everybody went to sleep, it was dark. Now it's so much easier just to turn on a light switch, but back then it was totally different. Everybody understood what light means, and too much light is not a good thing either. If it, some places is there's constant light in the parts of um, Siberia where it never gets dark at, in the summertime. It's actually bad for your organism. We need to have both uh, light and darkness because God made uh, earth in such a perfect way where we have the perfect amount of light and then we go, we rest, and then the next day begins. So light is a very important thing for us. So the, the Philippian church here, we see that Apostle Paul was, uh, the Philippian church was worried about Apostle Paul because he was in jail. But he, Apostle Paul says, do not worry about me because I am in jail, but even in jail I am preaching and the gospel is being spread, even in this kind of way. And he tells us, just continue to serve because we are uh, partners in the gospel. So he says, I'm doing what I can do, but you serve. You're free out there. You be a witness, be a light to the world. So and then we remember when we talked about the sacrifice of Jesus, how he humbled himself. And uh, the ultimate example of uh, the service of love for us. And then after all that, he tells us why it is so important to, to live in such a way. And then the example he gives us is because the world is watching. Why is it important to be a light? Why is it important to be a good witness? Because the world is watching. That's why we should live a godly life. So that title of my message today is how to shine your light effectively. We all could shine uh, lights in different ways. If you light a candle, it will be just enough to light a small area around the candle. Or if you have a really bright flashlight and you walk around and maybe blind people and put put a big beam in their eyes and saying, you have to know Jesus. If you don't, you're going to hell. That's not an effective way of uh, witnessing And we need to have a way that instead of blinding people to show the path, that our light will show people how to get out of darkness. And that's what Apostle Paul is encouraging us to do here. So let's read the passage today that we'll look at. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. Philippians 2, 14. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. 
Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also may be, also be glad and rejoice with me. So here in the middle of the verse that, verses that we read, we see the phrase where Paul says, Among whom you shine as lights in the world. So by this, we obviously see that the, the world is dark, a dark place, and it needs the light, the light of a Christian to be shining. Now, how uh, foolish would it be of me to light a candle and go out uh, in, in bright sunlight and take that light and s pretend that this light that I have is illuminating the path around me or take a really bright flashlight? In the sunlight, we do not need another source because uh, God gave us the sun and we, that is enough. So in a, in a sense, if a Christian is only shining in the church, that's not really effective because every, we come here, we're all shining the light, but it's all good and it's comfortable and everybody's uh, shining bright here, but it's, it's like shining a light in the, in the sunlight. We need to shine in the place where it's dark, the place where we work, the place where we go to school, the place where we contact with people that don't yet know Christ. So, like I said, today my topic is called How to Shine Your Light Effectively, and I would like to share three ways of which we can do that. How to shine your light effectively. Number one, by knowing our position in the world. So by knowing our position in the world, by knowing what, how God looks at us and what God thinks of us, that helps us have a proper, effective way to light the world around us. So let's look at verse 14 and 15. So do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault. Let's just read to half of this verse. So he calls us blameless, harmless, and children of God. And then he also says that we are without fault. So that's the position we as Christians have in the world because we are a part of the, we're not a part of, we're a separate from the word world, even though we are in the world, but we are not a part of the world. So the position that God gives us is that we are children of God, and that's such a high calling. So when we, we understand that calling, it's much easier to shine because we see that this is what God uh, commands of us, to shine. So a practical way of working out your own salvation, like I said before, the last thing we talked about was work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And a, a practical way of doing that is by being grateful for everything that we have. Being grateful because if God is good, then he will give us what is good for us. So because here he says, do everything without murmuring or complaining. And as soon as we hear this, uh, I think a lot of us get convicted because we, uh, especially, I know myself, I complain a lot more than I should. We have such a perfect life. We have everything we ever needed, yet we always find things to complain about. But if we look at the world from a different perspective, we see that God gave us so much and there's really nothing we could complain about, then we, we should be thankful that God gives us so much that we could um, enjoy in our lives. So not complaining or murmuring. The, the word is actually like um, mumbling under one's breath. It's not really vocalizing it to to your neighbors is just constantly having a bad attitude, and that's the kind. That's one main thing that will drive people away from the light. This will be an ineffective way of shining the light because if we're constantly grumbling and murmuring and complaining, then this will turn people off from wanting to be a part of this light. And then the other word he uses is disputing. So the word disputing is uh, actually verbalizing your bad attitude in a way that people can see around us. So this is actually not only verbalizing, even physically, maybe fighting and quarrels. Remember James, how he talks about where does all this kind of uh, attitude come from? It comes from within, from you know, not knowing, not having this close walk with the Lord. Because if we, we walked right with God, then most likely we wouldn't have this complaining and disputing attitude. And I would like to share an example of something that happened to one lady 
that kind of demonstrate a little bit of what this hap um, example of this. So one time there was a woman driving uh, at a regular road and there was a traffic light and the light was still, you know, just barely starting to change yellow and the lady wanted to pass through but the car in front of her decided to stop and do the right thing and she stopped and the lady, the person in front stopped. Well, the lady really came up close but she stopped in time and she was really angry that the, lady, the man stopped. So as the, a few minutes pass and the light turns green but the man was so busy on his phone or whatever he was doing, he ignored the light, he didn't notice it so she starts to honk slowly, you know, sometimes we just give a light tap on the horn. So she did that and nothing, the man didn't have a reaction. So a, a little bit louder, she honks again and no, no reaction. So she opens the window, starts yelling, come on, go, we, we have to go. And so after all that, the man sees the light and starts going and right as he goes, it turns red again. So this lady is really, really angry. She, she is, uh, just doing all kinds of uh, bad signs out the window. She's cursing and all this. And then at the same time, right behind her, there was a cop that noticed this whole situation. So the, the cop actually comes out and has his gun drawn at the lady. And it seems so weird what, what happened. But he asks her to come out. She puts her hands in, the, in handcuffs and puts her in the car and takes her away. So. She's really confused at what happened. Why is, he, why is she being arrested? So the cop, after two hours of uh, questioning, everything was okay, he actually let her go. And the cop comes up to her and says, you know, lady, I, I want to explain why I, I went through such extremes to pull you over. When I pulled up behind you, I noticed on the back of your bumper you had uh, three or four stickers. And one of them was, what would Jesus do? Then she had a bumper uh, uh, frame that said uh, follow me to Sunday school and then another one the fish chrome fish and another one was like a pro-abortion uh, anti-abortion uh, sticker a couple other verses so it's just full of uh, Bible verses so the thing I assumed right away was the car was stolen by your actions so I wanted to check to make sure that car wasn't stolen so the cop was so sure that the owner could not be the lady that was screaming so we see there was two, uh, two different stories. One was, say, she was saying the right thing on the back of her car, but her attitude was completely wrong, which was causing people the confusion. So obviously her uh, light was not shining effectively at this moment. And I think uh, maybe on a less extreme no, uh, uh, less extreme, we, this probably happens to us all the time, maybe we have a bad witness, maybe we're not pulled over by the cops, but this stuff like this happens, but we should strive to have a, a consistent uh, position in the world, like God, he looks at us, at us as children of God, not as children of the world. So this lady had a bad witness, but may God help us be good witnesses to the world. So the other thing he says, we will shine effectively when we uh, walk blamelessly, when we live as blameless. So it's interesting how God calls us blameless. It's not to say that we are sinless, but God sees us uh, pure and righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. So if we have this relationship with, with the Father, with Jesus Christ, then we walk, uh, as one of the Psalms says, he who walks upright and walks righteous and speaks the truth in his heart. So not just show the, the, that we know the word, but actually demonstrate it in a physical way. And I, the next thing he says is that we are harmless. Maybe some translations have a different, uh, in verse 15, different word, harmless. Uh, so the, the word harmless is actually used in other translations. Actually, we see that it's used in the Gospels. Uh, Jesus uses this uh, of us. He says, Matthew 10, 16. This is a way that the, the kind of uh, temperament we as Christians should have. So he doesn't say we are like wolves. We are not like, he doesn't compare us to other kind of animals, but he compares us to sheep. And we know sheep are the, are the most meek or animals that they really can't defend themselves. So he says, behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. 
Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Nobody's afraid of a dove when they see a bird. We're not going to try to flee when we see a dove flying, like if we would see maybe an eagle or a vulture. The dove is the most gentle animal there is. And God says we are harmless. We should be harmless like the dove. But then again, he says there, there, we should be wise as serpents, just like Alex was talking. A serpent, he attacks with its venom very specifically. He knows where its enemy is, and he attacks. Just like the sword of the spear, we can point somebody really specifically. Uh, we use the word, and the word will uh, convict somebody. So we are physically, we are harmless, but spiritually, we should not be harmless. We should actually use the word to pierce to uh, the heart of those, the world that is unbelieving. By being a light, we are a light by helping others come to the light. And obviously, we, I don't think anybody has ever seen a sign that says, beware of, of sheep. Like, you know, when you come to a gate and you see, beware of dog, but nobody puts a sign that says, beware of sheep, because sheep is not an aggressive animal. So God comes and says, we are harmless, that we shouldn't be uh, causing uh, um, commotion, we shouldn't be making problems, but we should be harmless, we should be spreading the light to all the world. And then later on he says that we are called the children of God. Now this is a really a close... Uh, he calls us children of God, not, not son, the son of God, because in some translations it says sons of God. So we are the children of God because we, are, we have this relationship through Jesus Christ. And how close that is to the Father that he calls us the children, his own children. And if we look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, uses the same wordage here. Apostle Paul says, Three, Galatians 3.26, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. So we are the sons of God. And that is our position in the world. That the world that we should live above reproach. So when we put on Christ, then we, we can reflect the light of the, of the world, uh, of, reflect the light of, of Jesus Christ. So we know that as the sun, it reflects the light unto the moon, and the moon itself doesn't have light, but it gives off light to us even at night. So just like we as Christians, we give the, off the light of Jesus Christ. So Apostle Paul also says that we are without fault. So he says, even though, yes, we do stumble, we have mistakes, but in our position in Christ, the position that God sees us is that we are without fault. That This means that we shouldn't have a, a specific sin that the world can point and say, look, you always stumbled at this and you never repented of this. The world shouldn't have uh, something like that to point out against us and say, you say you live this way, but then you oh, demonstrate another thing in another, uh, live different lives in different uh, areas. We should be the same in all our lives. So the first thing we looked at is how we can shine effectively is by knowing our position. Secondly, how can we shine effectively by knowing the depravity of the world? by knowing the condition that the world is in. If we think everything is okay in the world, then we won't even think that there is a need to go out and light the, light, light the darkness of the world because we might think, oh, it's not that bad. But if we look around, we see how much worse the world must have gotten for, even from the time when Apostle Paul wrote this. The world is constantly getting worse and worse. There's nothing in the world that is getting better so we should, that means that the darker the times get, the brighter we should be shining so that people can see us, see the light and see, not, not glorify us, but as it says, glorify the Father. So God calls us to shine in a crooked generation. 
So here he uses the word and in 15. Let's read the second part of verse 15. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So here he talks about the world being crooked. And the, world, the word he actually uses is a, a Greek word that maybe some of you are familiar with if you ever heard of a back condition where the spine is crooked, it's called scoliosis. So the, the Greek word he uses is scolias. So this is a crooked, somebody that's born with a crooked back or maybe when they develop, it's not properly developing and they, ha they cannot bear the load. Uh, so when our, back, our spines are proper in alignment, then we can bear the proper load. But he's saying the wor world is a crooked place. There's nothing straight, nothing... Uh, constant about the world. So God says the world is evil, full of sin and darkness. And let's look at what uh, Apostle, uh, the uh, Gospel writer Luke says in chapter 3, verse 5. Luke chapter 3, verse 5 says, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth. So the crooked ways, when Jesus came, he came to even out the crookedness and to lower the mountains and to raise the low spots and to make the straight. The crooked shall be made straight. And the only way that's possible is through our testimony, our lighting the world. Also, God says here, uh, through, Jesus, through the apostle Paul that this world is a perverse generation. It's not... There's nothing good in this world. We can't, sometimes we look at people from far away and we say, well, it's not that bad. Why do we really need to go and tell them about Jesus? Because we think, oh, everything's okay. But the Bible says this world is a crooked and perverse generation. So this world is an enemy of everything that God stands for and everything that Christians should be. So another place that talks about this is Acts 13.10 where the author here says that we live in a world that is also crooked and it's, there's only one straight path in Jesus Christ. So let's read it. Acts 13.10 says, O full of all deceit and all fraud, you sons of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? You notice how it says there that the, the Lord has a straight way, but the, we're not going to look at the context of what Jesus was talking, uh, what the apostle was talking about here. But we see that the world, the Lord has a straight way, but the world always wants to make it crooked and take it, take you away from the path of righteousness, perverting the straight ways of the Lord. So even Jesus called the people of the world in the same manner. Jesus. Uh, had the same idea. He, even when Jesus was, uh, oftentimes we see Jesus love the people, but when, he, when it came to looking at the world, he, he had a proper understanding of the world. He knew there was nothing good in the world. He says this, uh, Matthew 17, 17. This is also what uh, Jesus said. And then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall it be with you? how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? So we see that Jesus called the same generation by the same word, uh, perverse generation. And then in the same verse he says, "You have to shine like lights in the world." So if we have to shine, that means he, Apostle Paul is also saying the world is a very dark place. And if it's a dark place, then we have to shine all the brighter. So the only light this dark world will ever see a lot of times is the Christians that they, that they come in contact with. And we do this by reflecting the light of Jesus Christ. So the darker something gets, the more brighter it, uh, we have to shine. So if you take a candle and put it, light it in a very uh, bright sunlight, it won't even be noticeable. But if, if you only have one source of light and you light it in a very dark place, it will give you light. And actually, there's an example that uh, is really 
personal to me. I remember when, one time we, me and my brother-in-law, we went uh, mountain biking here in, in the mountains of Tussie Mountain, and we went towards the evening, but it wasn't that late. It might, there must have been two hours of sunlight left, so we thought we'd spend maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, and come back. And we looked at the map, and the map was very, uh, you know, a map, it doesn't show mountains. It just kind of shows things, destinations. So we looked at the map. We said, let's go here, let's go there, and we'll come back this way. But as we went, we didn't realize that there was actually two huge mountains that you couldn't really see on the map. So we got, we got lost, and we only had one source of light, which was one light uh, on, the, on our bicycle. And basically, without that light, we would have probably never got out till the next morning because it was pitch black, and we only had one source, and that little light helped us see and get out of there. It took us maybe three hours to finally get back on a normal route, and we got out of there. But that light was very... Uh, during the day, that light would have been absolutely useless, but at night, that little source of light was enough to, to bring us to the proper destination. So a couple of interesting facts about the light is that light has to, first of all, be seen. So if, if we light a, a source of light and nobody can see it, then it's, uh, it's useless. Uh, or light it re it reveals the things that darkness tries to hide. So... You know, a lot of times we maybe we have a clothing article hide, hanging in the closet and maybe we pull it out and we don't, we don't really give it a good examination and we think it's clean, but when we put it on and we come out in the sunlight, we see so many spots that we didn't notice and because the sunlight revealed it to, to us. And also light shows people a way out of darkness and that's the next point that I would like to talk about, how... If people do not see the light, they will not be able to come out of the darkness that they are in. So we looked at the, our position in Christ. We looked at the depravity of the world. And now uh, another way of how to shine your light effectively is by knowing our calling for the world. Our calling that God gave us for the world. What do we need to do? What does God want to, us to do? And that's verse 16 through 18. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and, I, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice of service, sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. So this is our calling. What does God want us to do in, in regards to the world, to how we should shine? So we are called to shine the light of Jesus effectively, and there's different ways of doing it. The first thing we looked at is by having the right attitude. That's verse 14, not grumbling. But the second thing is having the right action. And the word he uses here is hold fast to the word of life. Verse 16 says, holding fast, or other translation ho says, holding forth. Uh, the Russian word says, sadirja slovo zhizni. It's not really holding it like, like you want to keep it from somebody else from taking it, but in a way, in the opposite, it's holding it so that others can see it, demonstrating it so that you're not just you not just know, know something, but you will show something to the people that you want to bring be your light bearers to. So we are called to shine by speaking the truth accurately. So that's what it, he says here. Holding fast the word of life. Holding fast the word of life. Or another synonym for this would be the gospel. To show the people that around us that there is only one way and that we should be attractive to them by the way we shine our light, not be um, those that show, uh, people want to avoid, but be the opposite, be the kind of people that people want to see the light because they see our shining, they see how uh, joyful we are in our relationship with Christ. So we are called to shine by living our lives differently from the world. 
So obviously, if we were exactly the same as the world, then there wouldn't be any distinction. We, we wouldn't, nobody would know that we are any different from the people of the world. So the light we shine should show the world a way out of darkness, and that's where we as Christians come in. So some, but some Christians might say, uh, I live a silent witness. I, I don't have to use words. Maybe we've even heard a, a phrase that says, uh, preach the word, and if necessary, use some words, uh, use words. But uh, that's not necessarily true all the time. Yes, we're supposed to live, the, our, our life is supposed to demonstrate it, but a, a lot of times we have to speak and say why we have the light of Christ. Because if we were just to live in our own community and never show why we have this light, why we are so joyful, people will not know why, what is different about us unless we speak it and say what is different about us and say that there's only one way to, to salvation through Jesus Christ. So I wanted to read one more verse that's in Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans 10, 14 talks about how we should speak because it says here, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So how can they believe, even if they see our light, that's oftentimes not enough because we have to be able to verbalize what Jesus did for us. And obviously there's a balance of both. We can't just say we believe in Christ and live the wrong way, or we can't just live correctly and never speak about our testimony in Christ. It has to be a balance of both. So also we see that we are called to sacrifice and serve. So one way we can uh, be effective in shining is by serving sacrificially. And we saw the example of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, but now he's talking more of a practical sacrifice here. He says in verse uh, 17, Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith. So this word, uh, may drink offering, is something we, I think, as People in the modern generation, we do not know what, what Apostle Paul meant, but even the pe people in Philippians, um, the Philippian church, those that were not even part of the Judaism tradition, that they did not see the rituals uh, done in the temple, they knew exactly what this meant because there was, uh, even the, the pagans had this offering, the drink offering, they would pour out a certain liquid uh, on the sacrifice that they gave. So this was an example of uh, Paul saying, I'm going all out. I might not ever see you again. I might die not in, in my chains here. So Apostle Paul says, I'm being poured out as a drink offering. So 2 Timothy 4, 6, he, he says the same, uh, same usage, but this is uh, at a later time when he actually never sees, uh, never comes out of that, situation he is, was in 2 Timothy 4, 6. He actually dies immediately after that. And this is what he says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So this is what Apostle Paul did. And he is encouraging us, the, the church, to keep following, to serve, to sacrifice and to serve so that the world around us will see that we love God and we, are, we serve him with a pure heart. So for Apostle Paul, it means that I am all in. I'm not, even if I never see you again, I did what I did, did best. I did what God called me for. I kept the faith. So God wants us to offer our bodies as sacrifice because only that, only then the the world will see us as an effective uh, light. So then the world will see us shining effectively when we serve the Lord. And in conclusion, I just wanted to read a very familiar passage, I think, to all of us. It's Romans chapter 12, the first few verses, where Apostle Paul talks about us giving our bodies as sacrifices. 
because if we do that, then we will be an effective light to those around us. So he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The reasonable service that we have, by doing this, the world will see that we are different and that we are shining our light for Jesus Christ. So we try to answer the question, how can we shine effectively? First of all, by knowing how God looks at us, this will change our relationship to others. We'll see that we are not part of the world. We are in the world, but we are separated. Also, by, by knowing the depravity of the world, by looking at having a proper understanding of how wicked this world is, we will never want to be a part of it. And lastly, we just look at the calling God has for us to serve him and, and be, wor worship the Lord in our daily sacrifice and service to the Lord. We, let, let's pray together and ask that the Lord helps us live out our, uh, the way we can shine the light to the world. Amen.